There's many different types of disc injuries, so uh, this is just a few, and these are the most common ones, at least, that we see with So I'm going to go into an illustration that I created right now. Um, and I created this mainly because uh, we there's 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 an issue with uh, education out there, so I hope this would be helpful for you guys to learn a little bit about it. Now, <clears throat> this right here is the vertebral, vertebral body, we call it the bone area. So I didn't go uh, extremely into detail on the bone uh, and the surrounding areas of it, mainly because, uh, I mean, there's, there's stuff like the, the vertebra back here or the actual spines of the scapula, we call it, let's just say this is the back of the body, and let's just say this is the front. Um, these are the disc right here. Again, these are the bone, and in these little spots in here, uh, it's spongy areas, what we call them trabeculae. So the disc area is right. Let me get my pointer here. This is the disc area, or sorry, the nucleus. Right here, we have, see all these little rings around here? This is called the annular rings, um, and these are different consistencies. These annular rings are a little bit tougher. This one we call like the jelly of the jelly donut. Um, there's many different analogies with it, but that's the most common one that you'll find. Now, this one right here, let's see, this one right here is going to be the normal one that I'm on. Um, I, the nucleus or the jelly in the center should be very centralized. It shouldn't go anywhere. It shouldn't poke out into these rings. Now, one of the most common types we see of these little disc injuries are these little tiny ones here. And these ones, uh, I just kind of say a disc injury to people to make it very general. Because I don't think there's a need uh, really to freak them out because disc uh, makes them freak out, it seems like. But here what we find is that this area here, see all these little rings again? Let's get my other pointer. See all these little rings again? Hmm, let's get rid of that pointer. Okay. <clears throat> so, all these little rings and whatnot in here. Uh, these things are, again, the annular rings. And see this little tiny spot in the center here where my pointer's at? This is the nucleus or the jelly starting to weave its way out of these fibers right here. Now this oftentimes will present as localized back pain. Um, it will hurt a lot of times you bend forward or to the side, but it doesn't mean that this disc is completely trash nor it's surgical at all. All the time, uh, this oftentimes happens with repeated movements. So repeated flexion, let me write that on the side here. <clears throat> repeated flexion. So that's going to be bending forward repeat uh, many, many times. So this can be from poor posture. It can be from poor sleeping posture. There could be many different reasons. Now, when we're going into the other types of injuries with the more advanced ones, let, let's just go into, let's get my pointer here. This type right here. So this is a vertical herniation, and a lot of times this is what people feel when they feel this, this pop. This oftentimes will happen with, let's go with lifting, sometimes with deadlift or squatting. Let's see if I can move this thing. This is my first time using this, actually. This would be like with deadlift or squatting. These don't have to be exactly like this. Um, or they don't have to occur from this, but notice that this vertical projection here, it's actually going into the, the uh, bone above it. It doesn't actually go out to the side. These ones are a little bit tougher to heal, but it doesn't mean they can't. The rough timeline that I've uh, observed people talking about is about a year or so for really this thing to start to remodel and scar up around it. Uh, the other ones are a little bit quicker, but they still can be a little bit of a pain in the butt sometimes. Now, I guess I should go back into <clears throat> Uh, this one, we had the, let's move these ones. So we have poor posture, we have poor sleeping, and repeated flexion on these types right here in the middle. And then we have the other types, which is going to be this one. This one is more of like the herniation that people think about. See this little out pocketing right here, it actually has come through the actual area of those rings right into here. Now, this is more advanced. Uh, I often tell people this does not happen overnight. 
I actually had a friend who his dad said he had a, so the MRI showed like a, it was something ridiculous, like a 15 millimeter herniation. I was like, how'd it happen? He's like, well, I just woke up with it. Well, you don't really just wake up with these things. Typically it starts as one of, one of these and it just becomes one of these over time. Uh, these ones, the goal is to, the goal of care is to, uh, we need to centralize. Huh, I don't know if you guys are gonna see that. The goal is to centralize the jelly. I'll put it down there. Centralize the jelly. If it does not centralize, it's gonna keep irritating on stuff out here. Uh, now there is, let's see if I can draw this. <clears throat> let's do a free hand. Let's do a yellow. So right here, we have a nerve coming to the side here. Now, if there's area that's bold, irritates onto the nerve, then you're gonna have zapping pain. Let's make a star. This is gonna be your sciatica, your leg pain, your radiculopathy and things of that nature. Now, that, that's not to say this can't happen on the other ones here as well. It can, but it doesn't, it's not always just a physical deformity on there. It means, there, so there's a lot of times there's a chemical response around it and it irritates the nerve as well. So you can get things like sciatica or leg pain with these type right here. Now, not every case is um, textbook, and just know that these are just roughly things we uh, look at when we're looking at conditions of herniations. One of, the, uh, one of the things that we commonly see with people like this is that we call it flexion intolerance. And if you've seen some of my other videos on flexion intolerance, uh, I show you how to get out of bed, how to get out of the car, uh, how to get onto the ground, how to walk, how to get out of a chair. Um, flexion intolerance really has to do, uh, it's uh, understanding your pain triggers. And if we don't get these areas, get this disc to start to gristle up and repair itself, then it's never going to get better. Um, that is the frustrating thing for people in these cases. Uh, so it doesn't mean it can't get better. Like I said, it, it just makes sh make sure you get the right person uh, to help you with this type of thing. Uh, let's see. Sorry guys, this is my first time using um, uh, this software. I'm gonna stop share. Okay, so um, if you do have a disc injury and you're interested in figuring out how to resolve it, feel free to contact us. Uh, I did put a link below. Uh, to an article, this is a free article. Uh, I do also have a lot of podcasts that are on that page as well that are helpful in understanding this type of thing. Um, I find one of the major things that people really lack uh, in back pain, and this is why I believe it to be such an ep epidemic, is you just, people don't understand it. And I'm not to say the clinicians don't understand it or the rehab specialists, it's just that the public doesn't understand it. They don't realize that a lot of things they're doing is creating their pain, and when they see a structural issue like this disc, they think, it's not gonna get better, I'm broken. I was, uh, it runs in my family, I'm just getting old. I mean, these aren't things that should be um, necessarily at the forefront of your mind with conditions like this. Yes, it is concerning thinking that, hey, I'm getting old, this won't get better, and maybe it was a genetic thing, but a lot of times it's not. It's how we use our body. So if you want information on this, go to the link below. Uh, I made a ton of information. Um, this article is probably 30 pages or so in just a text document. And the reason why I did that is not to bore you. And I tried to make it as simple as I possibly can. Um, but I want you guys to understand really what creates this condition. I don't want to write five different articles and think that maybe you only read one. Let's just read the entire article. Let's understand it. Listen to the podcast at the end. You're going to get a ton out of this. Now, if you have not subscribed to the channel already, please do. Listen to the podcast as well. There also is a link in the description and share this with friends.